Hello everyone, my name is Edgar de los Santos. If you can hear me, can you please press the button with the hand? Thank you so much. In today's session we're gonna go over the CAD to CAD modeling. We're gonna talk about the pre-modeling using uh, CAD based programs. Uh, and then we're gonna import that geometry from CAD into Maya Civil. Then we're gonna start the low definition and application and then go over a little bit of the construction staging and then we're gonna end up exporting that CAD back uh, exporting that model back to the CAD. So in the pre-modeling and this entire webinar will be talked about the uh, steel composite bridge this is the bridge information that we're gonna go over it's a two-span bridge uh, with a total length of 180 feet and a total width of uh, 37 feet so the total uh, the entire pre-modeling will be used uh, or will be done in CAD CAD is an everyday tool as you might know uh, and with CAD you will be able to generate the model from the center line saving a lot of time and also you know generating the model can be very time consuming so this will actually be a lot of benefit or, or will benefit you a lot in the sense of uh, not having to model element by element uh, this can be done by the drafters if the case in the case that you have any or you can just bring it from the your uh, plans as well so what we're going to do is we're gonna let's say if you have a model like this one in which you you know you generated your plans and you can just bring the center line for each one of your members uh, in this case what we did was we generated a layer for each one of the elements so that will make it easier for us to import it into Maida Civil. Uh, we generated blue for the cross frames, uh, green for the dummies, the center it, uh, in red is going to be the transverse elements and we have white for the substructure. If you have drafters you can tell them to do something like this it will be very easy for them and will save you a ton of time. So uh, let's say that you have something like this in CAD and you want to bring it into Maida Civil. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Maida Civil. For those of you who do not know the program, this is the graphical user interface. Uh, through this graphical user interface, you can generate the entire model. Uh, but in this case, we're going to save those steps and just bring the AutoCAD. Let's create a new project. And with that new project, we're, what we're going to do is, uh, the first thing is, check the units. Let's use kips, foot, and let's bring in a uh, cat. As you can see here, Maya Civil can import different types of uh, files. In this case, we're going to use the cat DXF extension. Uh, and we're going to bring a cat from... Uh, our documents and here we have the CO final which is the this uh, model that we have here is the center line of this uh, bridge and what we're going to do is we're gonna bring in uh, members by um, importing the geometry so let's say that we bring the transverse elements as the center we can simply apply and the program will do something like this if we bring the cross frames let's say only bring the cross frames the program will generate also the cross frames like this one as you can see we're saving so much time just in the generation of the geometry we can bring multiple at the same time uh, let's bring in the dummy elements we can also bring the peer cap and the peer or we can bring multiple uh, layers at the same time as you can see here so it's up to you however you want to do it the program also allows you as you can see to assign the material properties right away in this case uh, we don't have any because we didn't define them yet but 
another good thing is that the program also generates groups so if you have the materials then you'll be able to assign the groups into the groups right away so here are the elements and the things that are already defined in the program um, what we're going to do is we're going to first uh, define a material and then we're going to define some sections we're also going to bring in a section from AutoCAD so that you don't have to define the section in Maida Civil. So everything can be brought from AutoCAD. So let's first define the materials that we're going to use. In order for you to define the materials, we go to the Properties tab, Material Properties, or you can simply right click on this option uh, on the Works tree and we say Add Materials. As you can see here, this is a warning that the program generates. When importing from AutoCAD the .exe file, uh, the length unit must be identical with the units used in CAD. That's why I changed to feet uh, when I first started the project. Keep that in mind. So let's add a material. Let's say that in this case we're going to use uh, A36 steel for the cross um, cross frames. So we have an entire database. Uh, let's just bring the eight STM, and let's use the A36 from the database. Perfect. After that, uh, let's add the concrete for the deck, and let's use a C4000 concrete, as you can see here. After you select the C4000, the program automatically activates the and generates the properties of that C4000. Then let's use a dummy material, which will be the user defined material just to generate those transverse elements and also those longitudinal denon dummies. Here we can define the properties of that dummy. with this modulus of elasticity, Poisson's ratio, uh, its temperature, and so on. This obviously is going to depend on the material that you use. Uh, let's name it dummy material. And then from there, we can simply find the materials that we're going to use. After that, let's use the database to define the some of the properties that we're going to use. So let's say that if uh, we're going to use uh, the database. Uh, the Mida Civil has a very extensive database that can show uh, different types of sections. You can automatically generate them from uh, different standards or, or codes or you can also bring them from CAD which is what we're going to do with the steel composite section. Even though the program has the different types of sections as you can see here uh, we're gonna follow that step so that you can have an idea of how to define it or how to bring uh, any type of section from AutoCAD. This is just to show you the different types of sections that are available in the program. So let's go into the database and let's define an angle section from the AISC uh, standard to define the uh, cross uh, frames. In this case, we're going to use an L4 uh, by 4 by 5 uh, sixteenth, and we'll bring it from the database. The program automatically generates its properties, and we can hit apply. Since this is the first section that is defined, the program will automatically assign it to all the elements. This is going to be easy uh, to change. I'll show you after we're done. Then we define our pier cap. So let's use a solid rectangle and let's define the section for the pier cap. This, this section will have a user defined uh, option and it's going to be a 5x5. Five five. We're going to use an offset from here to uh, center top and we apply it. Then we define the section for the pier. The pier is going to be a solid round section with a 6 feet diameter and it's going to be center center. 
it's offset so it's gonna be I want it to be right in the center I hit apply then we're going to define the transverse uh, dummy elements and we're gonna use solid rectangle transverse dummy and we're going to use a with the same thickness of the uh, deck and five feet width. This five feet uh, is the spacing between the transverse elements. Just uh, for your information, let's define that one as well as center top. Let's just switch it here. And then we're going to have the dummy longitudinal elements that are just going to be very, very small. This is just to model the um, moving load. And then uh, this will be about it. Uh, we don't have the composite section yet what we're going to do is we're going to bring the composite section from AutoCAD so how can we do that as I mentioned earlier you can bring the geometry uh, from CAD and we'll save a lot of time generating uh, the model but we also have an option in the program that is called section property calculator with the section property calculator you'll be able to define any type of section in very simple steps and the program will automatically calculate its properties and then you can bring it for the analysis so in order for you to open up the property section property calculator you can just hit the tools option and use the section of property calculator a window like this one is gonna pop up and let's just change the units and then from there we're going to have something like this. What we can do is we can import a CAD uh, with the section. My section looks like this one. Since this is a plate girder, we the section of the girder is defined just by lines and the deck is defined as the rectangle as you can see here. We can later assign a thickness to the model. So it will be something like this. So in order for us to define the properties of the section, what we're going to do is we're gonna first define a width of those lines. So we're gonna go into the curve option and we're gonna change its width. We can define the width. Uh, in this case, let's define the width for the uh, top flange. And this width is gonna be 0 0.0625. Then for the web, And then for the, if you press the control key, uh, you'll be able to select multiple lines and have them selected. And the bottom flange. And you have the section defined right there. I mean, just the, the width of each one of the curves. After that, what we're going to do is we're going to find the materials. So we're going to the model option, we go to material, and let's define the steel portion. Uh, let's say it's modulus of elasticity. Poisson's ratio 
and its density and we hit apply and let's define the reinforced concrete portion we say I RC Poisson's ratio and the unit density of 0.15. Okay, let's check the Poisson's ratio of the steel. Should be uh, 0.3. So let's go back and change that. Perfect. Well, it says that the material is already used. And let's just do the modification. Yes. Oh, let me do the RC. Perfect. Let me see. We have the RC defined, and let's do the RC. Sorry, we have the steel defined, and let's do the RC option. Let's do the point three. Let's define this modulus of elasticity. And it's unit intensity. And the RC. Let's define is modulus of elasticity. and we hit OK and we have both materials defined in the model then we go into the model section composite section generate so we assign the name to it the number of parts that it will have in this case it's going to be two and the base material we hit apply and the section has been generated as you can see so now we're going to assign some parts into the section a model section composite section and add part let's say part one the girder I girder we're gonna use line material steel and we're gonna use the control option we apply part 2 is gonna be the deck plane type and the reinforced concrete material and hit apply this section has been defined now we calculate its properties so to get the properties of the section we're going to properties and calculate uh, composite properties. We specify a mesh. The smaller mesh we use, a slider increase in the calculation uh, of the properties. Let's just select a part of it. Click apply and the program will automatically calculate the, pro the properties. As you can see here. Finally we're going to export it into MyDasable so in order for that to do that we go to model section composite section and then we hit export we're gonna use the composite let's say composite one we click on the section or part of it we hit apply and then the section has been um, exported and we go back into my disable into our model then we go into the properties section and then here we're going to import the section from the composite tab so we go into the composite we hit 
the composite general option we select the sec file which is the composite one that we just generated and here the program will automatically generate it let's say composite here are the properties for part 1 for part 2 and the total properties are right here and then what we're gonna do is we're going to bring that section into the program so let's change its offset in this case to center top we hit OK and then we have all the sections so in order for us to change all the properties it will be easier if we activate the second tree menu which is right here and then we're going to the groups tab let's say for the cross frame we already have the uh, section for the dummy we can assign the longitudinal dummy option as well as its dummy material for the peer cap we can assign the peer cap material and section as well so let's say the grade 4000 for the peer uh, same thing by just drag and drop option we can uh, assign materials and properties right away as you can see it's a very easy process for the girder option we can assign the composite section as you can see here and the program will automatically generate the composite right there after that we have the uh, dummy transverse elements which are the transverse dummy and these will have the dummy material as well this is just for generating the transverse uh, connection into in between the elements after that what uh, we can simply check that every element is assigned by doc double clicking assigned properly and then what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the definition of the loading and the construction staging the program allows you to define or to consider different types of um, loading and construction sequences so in order for us to define the loading uh, I'm gonna do like a very simple uh, procedure for it but um, in this case what we're gonna do is let's define a load group DW for example and let's define a load case for that we can have different types of loading barrier loading uh, the DC the DW the dead load let's say DC or self weight it's up to you whatever you want to define self weight of the bridge so let's say if you want to apply static loads into the model you can here go into the loads tab static loads and use the static load cases here let's define the self weight and let's assign it into uh, the dead load and here we can define the dead load we have an option in the program where you can define its self weight automatically it's the self weight option in this case we're gonna assign the self weight load case and also the load group because we're gonna use the load group for the construction staging we assign one for the self weight and there we have the self weight of the structure let's define uh, also some of the uh, distributed loads let's say if you want to simulate uh, the weight of the 
like uh, wet concrete we can define a load such as the a uh, construction load or just as the let's go into the construction stage loading can define it as CS load and we have the wet concrete right here if we want to define the distributed load for the wet concrete we can simply select the girders and assign the wet concrete load uh, group here we assign the load group for the construction sequence and we assign its weight. That way you can have the with uh, concrete load in the the model as well. Let's go a little bit into the boundaries. So let's define some supports. I'm gonna make it a little simple. And we will define different types of support. So let's say that for the girders we're gonna support them at each end and we're gonna use a, the boundary option define support here we're gonna add the support group and we're gonna add each one of the supports that we'll be using in this case let's use vertical uh, restriction or displacement uh, uh, restriction on the displacement in the C axis as you can see here let's also use a C and Y displacement restriction in this part and then let's do the same for the other portion of the bridge You can define the supports as you wish. In this case, just for the to show you how you can do that in the program. And we're gonna restrain restrain the bottom portion of the pier, which is gonna have something like this one. After that, what we're gonna do is we're going to generate an elastic link that will connect or simulate the bearings between the pier cap and the girders so it will be something like this so what we're going to do is we're going to just activate that portion of the bridge and then uh, the program will show you show us just that part after that we're going to have something like this we activate it we have something like this and we're just simply going to connect here the, the program is automatically asking me to save it so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, simulate bearing paths using uh, an elastic link here we can define its stiffness so so let's say that we're going to have infinite stiffness just to generate like a fixed type of um, connection between the um, substructure and the superstructure here we can select the nodes, let's also assign the boundary group and let's select the two nodes that will be connecting the like this substructure with a superstructure will be something like this as you can see after that uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to generate uh, rigid links between the cross frames to simulate the rigid connection between the cross frames and the uh, the longitudinal girders, right here. 
So in order for us to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the rigid link option in the program and we're going to start defining them in the following way. We go into the rigid link. We're going to also assign this into the let's say rigid link let's assign it into the rigid link group in this case let's select a master node which will be this one right here this one right here and we select the slave nodes which will be these two right here we're gonna do a rigid body type of uh, connection and we're gonna copy these in the following um, distances. We can calculate the distances with the program pressing the F4 or going into the query query nodes and here if we click on two nodes the program will give us the distance between the two nodes. We can simply copy that distance, paste it and then redo it for the last one we copy it and paste it and then we hit apply and that way we can generate uh, the rigid links we're gonna do that for the following connections or the following cross uh, uh, frames and we're gonna use the master node again here and select the two slave nodes and just hit apply. Let's do that for the following elements master, slaves, apply, master, slaves, and apply. master in this case and the slave nodes and apply master slave that way we can uh, Simulate that rigid connection between the cross uh, frames and also the girders. We're almost done. Master. After that, what we're going to do is and we're all set. Let's define the construction stages. In order for us to define the construction stages, we go to the load tab, construction stage, and we use the define CS option. Here we can define the construction stage, stage 1 for example we can give it a duration say 10 days and in this case what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the peer and the peer cap hopefully we're gonna are gonna have let's say three days of age at the activation uh, we're also going to assign the supports as the form and we're gonna assign the self weight in the first step, step. if we hit here stage one we're gonna have the peer with the supports as you can see here as you can see this one has the just a substructure let's go back into the base and let's add another construction stage let's say stage 2 with 10 days of duration in this case we're gonna add the cross frames and the girders 
with zero um, age we're gonna add the rigid link support as well and we're gonna add no loads because we already have the dead load defined if we hit OK we're gonna have the stage 2 with the rigid links and the supports after that let's see how the stage 2 is in this case we have the links but we don't have the uh, supports at the piers at the girder I'm sorry so what we're gonna do is we're going to assign these elements of support these nodes into this group let's assign the peer cap with the the peer with the support nodes so we copy it this one we paste it and we assign those so that we can have those activated on the stage one which is gonna be something like this same thing we're gonna do for the location of the rigid links so if we do the cross frames for example let's also include this portion in the cross frames so that we can have the elastic links with them or we can simply include them as part of the pier as well so let's use the pier and let's define that portion as well there we have to go into the base option into the base all the modifications of the model has to be done in the base then that way we're gonna have something like this we have already the um, supports there with the elastic links in on the first stage and then we have stage 2 with the supports and everything there if we want to add any type of loading for example we can add on a stage 3 in which um, we have any type of loading or another type of element so let's say the dummy element if we want to add them with a specific age um, let's say three days and there's another type of loading we can also do that after that what I'm gonna do is I'm going to define just one moving load to show you how it is done we have different types of loading in the program I'm gonna use the um, lane load and I'm gonna define it five uh, feet or let me just define it 6.5 feet from the center of that particular element and I'm gonna use uh, lane cross beams uh, in order for me to do the uh, distribute the load into the cross elements so yeah, I'm gonna use the group for the cross elements which is the center group as you might uh, remember 
and in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the most outer elements of my bridge and then from there I'm going to define the moving load or the traffic lane in this case I can do the same for a second line let's say if I define it at 15.5 feet for example I can do the cross frames again and define it based on these two points as well which is will be this location after we define the traffic lane we can define the vehicles in the program we have standard vehicles we have worked with many um, DOTs and we have them available in the program and we also have the Ashto standards such as the um, or Ashto RFD uh, let me just go into the Ashto RFD and let me redefine the traffic lanes lane 1 for example 6 feet cross frames Apply length two, fifteen point five and redefine cross beam with the two elements. And there you go. Now we have the vehicle definition. As I mentioned, we have many types of vehicles available for the in this case actual RFD we have also worked with many DOTs as we and we have the vehicles loaded into the program in this case I'm just gonna have the HL93 and then I'm gonna use a moving load case that will have the multiple presence factor and we'll have the minimum and maximum number of loaded lanes we hit OK and that way if we check we have each construction stage and then from there from there we can run the model Let's just run it. Then after we finish, uh, I'm not gonna go over in detail into the analysis portion. Uh, when we're done with this model, we can simply export it to CAD in order for us to show. Uh, let's say you want to present a project and you need a rendering of the model and you don't have. Um, let's say you don't want to use Midas as the rendering you can use you can you simply display it using cat functions such as the ones that I'm gonna show you now uh, in which you can export this model to cat either to center line or to the entire hidden or render option and then you'll be able to have something like this where you have the 3d model you can present it uh, the overall model information without using Midas Civil to the clients or just for displaying purposes or discussions uh, you can you'll be able to generate a rendering like this one and export it into AutoCAD so let me just go back to the model and we use the export function export AutoCAD DXF all the elements center line and shape so that way you can simply export it composite model like this one and then you can bring that composite model into the um, AutoCAD so let's just open that composite model that we just created and you're gonna have something like this a 3D rendering of the section and the bridge that we have just created As you can see here, 
is this is very useful for um, showing the different parts of the bridge or displaying the different portions or if you want to present a 3D view of it without using Mida Civil, you can also do it as well in the program. Uh, I hope that you guys could use this uh, cat to cat function in order for you to generate the entire bridge without having to model it in the program you as I mentioned can bring the DXF file as you saw in the video uh, in the webinar I'm sorry and as you saw in the session and then you can simply generate your model with simple steps generating the sections importing from CAD the section as well generating the different loads all that without having to you know going to model member by member manually uh, thank you all for your attention if you have any questions please uh, ask or send us the ticket into the global support at mysuser.com this is our global platform for technical support my name is Edgar Santos I hope you have a very good day bye bye thanks again